Imagine you're a roadie with about 2,000 pounds, 2,000 dollars, 2,000 euros to spend on a brand spanking new road bike. Do you embrace everything that modern bike technology has brought us? Aerodynamics, disc brakes and all the rest? Or do you go a bit more traditional with rim brakes and classic design features? I'm going to be pitting two bikes head to head today that embody those opposite ends of the roadie spectrum. Before I do that, however, a big shout out to our kit sponsors Freewheel, who hooked me up with everything I'm wearing right now. Check the links in the video description if you want to know more. So, on to the bikes. This is the Giant TCR Advance 2 and it costs £1,999 or 2200 US dollars. This is the Merida Reacto 4000 and it costs £2,250. It's not available in the US, Merida bikes aren't sold there, but I want you to think about what a bike like this represents. We're talking about opposite ends of the roadie spectrum and the specific models aren't necessarily that important. There are good, solid reasons to choose both of these bikes. Let's get into the details. Let's start with the giant TCR Advance 2. Ironically, for a bike that once defined the modern road frame, the giant TCR is here representing the more traditional end of the spectrum. The TCR, don't forget, was the original compact frame. That's meaning with a properly sloped top tube. And in a sense, we've come full circle because the modern aerodynamic Reacto has a horizontal top tube. The TCR Advance 2 is the very cheapest TCR in the range and it gets the third tier carbon. Although in fact, according to Giant, this frame weighs the same as the second tier and the weight penalty over the top tier is only 85 grams plus the weight of a seat post because the top tier has a seat mast. Buying the cheapest TCR gets you the exact same shape frame as the more expensive models apart from that seat mast though. I really love the look of this frame. It's got quite sort of organic curves and it's very slim and dainty. It all speaks to being kind of like a lightweight climber sort of bike. Now obviously this has rim brakes and they're not even direct mount which would be the more modern type of rim brake they're single bolt calipers and really nothing about this bike is particularly modern or complicated in that sense being rim brake it's also got quick release skewers uh, the cabling we call it internal cabling but the cables are not fully hidden so there's no complicated proprietary routing going on in fact, the only thing about this bike that's really in any way non-standard is that it's got a one and a quarter inch fork steerer rather than the more common one and an eighth inch. But it's quite easy to get stems that are one and a quarter inch. That's not really that big a deal. When this latest generation of the TCR launched, Giant did claim some aero improvements over the previous model. But really, this is not an explicitly aero-focused design. It doesn't have truncated aerofoil sections everywhere or everything hidden on the inside. So in most respects, it's basically quite a traditional road bike. By contrast, the Merida Reacto 4000 is modern everything. Every detail of this frame is focused on aerodynamics. So there are truncated aerofoil sections throughout. It's got a super slim down tube, which is almost like on a time trial bike. The seat stays are dropped. And obviously most key of all is that it's got disc brakes. The Reacto 4000 is the cheapest Reacto in the range and it gets Merida's second tier CF3 carbon, which is a bit heavier than the top tier CF5 carbon. Aerodynamic optimization has inevitably brought greater complexity to road bikes. The Merida has its cables mostly hidden. You can see a little bit around the bar, but the way that they've done it is perhaps a better compromise than some of the more proprietary designs. This is the FSA SMR cable routing system, which is an almost standard stem, but which routes the cables along the bottom of the stem underneath the cover. And that means that they're relatively easy to access, but hidden from view most of the time. And you can fit a standard stem in place of that if you want to. Incidentally, that is the exact same system used on the Bianchi Arcadex. Check out my review here. 
It's probably also worth talking about tyre clearances. One of the great bonuses about the move to disc brakes on road bikes is that it makes it much easier for bike designers to give you generous tyre clearances. The Reacto doesn't go as far as some. Officially, it goes up to a 30mm tyre, but that does beat the Giant, which officially goes to a 28 I say officially because there is usually some leeway in these recommendations. Let's talk frame weights next. And this gets a little bit complicated because we are dealing with manufacturer's claims and there is an extent to which you should take these things with a pinch of salt. However, Giant says that the TCR Advance 2's frame in a size medium weighs 830 grams unpainted. Unpainted is important, remember that. Merida, on the other hand, says a size small, which is smaller than this because this is a medium, of the Reacto's frame weighs 1,165 grams painted. Now, that sounds like quite a big difference, but paint is a lot heavier than you think, and the real-world difference between these bikes in comparable sizes would probably actually be very small. Incidentally, the second tier Merida that we've got here has a weight penalty of about 200 grams over the top tier. So, let's talk about the builds. Now, both these bikes have Shimano 105, pretty much our favourite mid-range group set. Do watch our very in-depth review on Bike Radar. However, the short version is that it offers you much of the same performance as Shimano Altegra or even Shimano Durace, but slightly softer shifting and it's obviously heavier overall. With these two bikes, you're getting different levers and brakes, but in other respects, very comparable builds. The Giant is geared with a 5236 crank and an 11 to 30 cassette, while the Merida goes very slightly harder with the same crank, but an 11 to 28 cassette. An interesting detail though, is that Merida very kindly gives you the medium cage GS rear derailleur, which means that if you ever want to fit a significantly larger cassette, it's better equipped to do that. Giant, on the other hand, gives you the SS short cage derailleur. The wheels on these two bikes are pretty comparable as well. They're both essentially in-house options. Giant has its PR2 clinchers, while Merida gives you the Expert CW, but these names don't really mean very much. They're both perfectly good kind of entry-level to mid-range aluminium clinchers. They're also both tubeless compatible, but only Giant gives you tubeless tyres out of the box. So if you want to go tubeless on the Merida, you're going to have to buy new tyres. It is a little bit disappointing also that Merida has chosen to fit very budget Continental Ultrasport 3 tyres, but you know, there are always corners cut somewhere on a spec. An interesting note also is that both these bikes come with 25mm tyres, which has been the norm for race bikes for a really long time, but these days more and more of us are putting slightly larger tyres on our road bikes. I know personally I'd probably prefer a 28. Having said that, on the Giant's rims, these specific tyres are measuring up a little bit bigger than their quoted 25mm size, whereas on the Merida these really are only 25mm wide. The tyres on the TCR, by the way, are not a big fancy name brand, they are also own brand, it's the Giant Gavia AC1. Um, they seem totally fine. I don't have rolling resistance data on them. I expect that a top of the range flagship tyre from a brand like Continental would be better, but they are perfectly fine. On the finishing kit front, there really is very little to choose between these bikes. Again, it's mostly in-house stuff because these are both big brands that have lots of in-house branded stuff to draw on. Really can't complain about any of it. They both have seat posts that are matched specifically to the frames and they both have very normal alloy cockpits and perfectly acceptable roady saddles. Saddles are a personal choice. You might get on well with them, you might not. The only thing that's not totally in-house is the stem on the Merida, which remember is that FSA one for the special cable routing. The Merida has a final couple of tricks up its sleeve and I really like these little details. The first is that there's a multi-tool nestled underneath the saddle which lives permanently on the bike. The second is that the cutout in the seat post, which is there to add a little bit of flex, also houses a useful little rear light, which means that you're never without a light on this bike. Just a nice thing to have. 
There is a reasonably large weight difference between these two bikes. The giant TCR Advance 2 with its rim brakes weighs 7.9 kilos for a medium, while the Merida Reacto 4000 with its discs weighs 8.7 kilos, also for a medium. However, as I'll get to, this bike sizes up quite large and really it's more comparable to a large sized giant. That brings me quite neatly onto geometry. Now these are both race bikes, they've both got properly racy geometry with quite racy frame angles. The reach on the size medium Giant TCR is 388 millimeters, while the stack is 545 millimeters. It's also got a very short and racy wheelbase of just 980 millimeters. As I said, the Merida's sizing is a little bit unusual. Most manufacturers would probably call this bike a size large, but Merida calls it a medium, and it's got 395 millimeters of reach and 557 millimeters of stack. Quite big. The wheelbase is still pretty short and racy at 990 millimeters. A better direct comparison would be to put the small Merida Reacto against a medium giant TCR. The small Reacto has 390 millimeters of reach and 542 millimeters of stack. Let's talk about what these bikes are like to ride. Let me preface this by saying I really like how both of these bikes ride, but they do offer quite a different experience on the road from each other. I don't think most roadies would be disappointed by either of these bikes, but which one you prefer largely boils down to what you're looking for in a bike. The TCR offers you a very pure, unadulterated road bike experience, very kind of uncomplicated. The fact that it's quite light means that it naturally feels very lively, it's quite stiff without being aggressively so, and it's quite comfy, and that is helped by the fact that it's got tubeless tires. So you can run them at quite low pressures if you want to and add a little bit of comfort where you wouldn't be able to on the Merida. If you like bikes that are in the classic mold of things like the Scott Addict or the Ridley Helium, the TCR will probably appeal to you. It very much feels like one of those classic lightweight climbers bikes. And for a lightweight rider like me, it feels like quite a natural choice. It's loads and loads of fun to ride, and you do really get a sense when you're riding it of just how refined the TCR platform has got. It's gone through so many generations, and it really is such a good bike. If you're looking for a riding experience that is more like that of a kind of modern superbike, the Merida Reacto is as close as you're going to get on a limited budget. I was actually surprised by quite how much I like the Reacto. It has that slightly special feeling of a really sophisticated bike. And at the same time, it's a good all-rounder. It's not horribly uncomfortable, despite being very, very racy and having aero features. The first generation of aero road bikes was a little bit too focused sometimes, and often they weren't that comfortable. But really, this bike is fine riding on varying road surfaces. Even with what are essentially budget tyres, it's overall a very refined experience. It's also super stiff, super racy and exciting. As a bike to fling down a big hill at high speed, this is fantastic. The glaring difference between these two bikes is obviously their brakes. The rim brakes on the TCR might seem totally anachronistic in this day and age, and this TCR is one of an ever dwindling number of proper race bikes with rim brakes. Discs are fantastic and they do offer better all conditions braking. But having said that, rim brakes like these work really, really well. And if you are riding mostly in good weather, like we're experiencing at this very moment, they really don't leave you wanting for much. They're fine. Brakes aside, this head-to-head -head is also very much about modern aero design versus traditional, more lightweight-focused design. This is a debate we constantly have at Bike Radar. We know that when you're chasing marginal gains, if you're a pro or a serious racer, that aerodynamics tend to matter more unless all you're doing is riding up very steep hills. Having said that, you cannot feel aerodynamic gains when you're riding along whereas you can feel weight savings. And the TCR is lighter, 
so it feels that little bit nicer when you're dancing on the pedals and doing your best imitation of Egg and Bernal, let's say. Really though, we are talking about quite a small weight difference, and if you had comparable sizes, small Morita versus medium giant, the difference would be even smaller again. I've actually been pleasantly surprised by how much I've liked both of these bikes. I've ridden TCRs before and I knew that I was probably going to like this. The Reacto was a complete novelty to me and honestly a really pleasant experience because it is just so, so good and I think Merida is more generous in trickling down that kind of superbike special source than a lot of other bike makers are and as bike prices have increased everywhere it remains relatively good value. If it came down to personal preference between these two bikes, I would be seriously torn. My kind of natural instinct, my heart, let's say, would probably be drawn towards the TCR because it is simple, pure, uncomplicated. And I think that there's something to be said for enjoying rim brake, lightweight race bikes while they still exist. Having said that though, the Reacto is such a good bike and it has great upgrade potential. If you're an aspiring racer who wants maximum performance and is maybe thinking of investing in some better wheels down the line, this is a hugely compelling platform. I would love to know what you think of these two bikes. Is it an act of arrogant madness to buy a rim brake race bike in 2021? And would you be more drawn towards the disc equipped, aerodynamic, modern, integrated everything Merida? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and as ever, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a new video.